I'm John Bishop, and you're watching The Red Man TV. Stoke, um, yes. If you're watching this, uh, again, if you're watching the subscribe, I'll show you this is a seamless transition. If you're watching this on, on YouTube, it's been a few days, and you're going to be wondering why we don't really know anything about this game, uh, because it's Tuesday, it's an entire eight days before this game takes place, thanks to the Christmas period. Um, <laughs> so we're going to do this as briefly as we possibly can, and try and keep it sort of as timeless as possible, James. Um, how much do you love or hate Boxing Day football? I used, when I was, I used to love it when I was a kid. I used to love watching it. You know, you you'd maybe watch it on a, on a channel or so, you know, on the listening on the radio. It was really exciting. I never went to a Boxing Day match, but you know, I love the concept of it. Now that I'm a bit older and I just want to stay indoors and get fat and boozy, I, I find it a bit of a nightmare. I don't. I can't get to a Boxing Day fixture. Yeah. I just. I can't make it. Dad, as a uh, as, as a man who, who, who cooks our Christmas dinner. On the Boxing Day, you, you very rarely get to Anfield if there is one anyway. I know, I used to love going to, to Anfield on Boxing Day, sort of hip flask in, uh, in hand and uh, <laughs> just a great atmosphere, just really, really great occasion. Um, so I do miss it, but uh, it's in a good course. <laughs> it is, it is, so we can all have fun. I don't bodies. believe you. <laughs> and, it, and well, at least it's um, it's and then away. If we were playing Stoke at home. Then I'd be quite pleased not to go because they're such a horrible side to watch. Really. They are indeed. Thankfully, thankfully we've gotten that that ninety minutes out of our system already. Um, Chris, what do you what do you, what do you make of Boxing Day games? Normally I work, so I hate it. But this year I am going to love it because I am off. You get to have something to eat, sit down, and enjoy a footy match on the town. Damn straight, damn straight. Yeah, no, I I look forward to that. I I, I actually I, I do love Boxing Day fixtures because I've been lucky enough to go to a few because <laughs> because this man has to give a season ticket off because he's cooking the dinner on occasion. Um, but no, you're right, the atmosphere is always fantastic because everyone's just in a, a good mood, aren't they? You've had a few, you know, everyone's, everyone's all... Everyone's all old. Exactly, <laughs> everyone is absolutely bad ass. And, you know, it's particularly if you can come away with the results as well, <coughs> more, more is the better. Um, yeah, the thing is, of course, that it's Stoke and it's Stoke away. Um, <laughs> we know what to expect from them, Chris, but... Uh, we fear Stoke to a certain extent because they are very hard to break down, but I personally fear them a lot less at the Britannia for some bizarre reason than I do with the Tom Carfield. It's because the Britannia's at, horrible. At home, last six, we've won three and drawn three yeah. against them. But there's this sort of perception that we're shit against them at home and to a large extent it's probably the, the, the football that they play and the fact that you don't I enjoy just think it. Like. The way they intimidated a lot of our players in Anfield this season that they were, were, and, and we got no protection at all from the ref. Yeah, you know, you know, including when he was standing on Louis Suarez, and the referee said he saw it and didn't think anything of it. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful referee. Well, that's that. I'll be there. That FA, think, FA, yeah. ignore any Suarez claims. I think, man, I think Sterling had a bad time. You know, mm. I think he played quite well, but he, they really did sing him out. Yeah, that that for me was a game where Sterling. I actually saw what a player he could be in prospect because he was getting booted left, right, and centre. But he actually really stood up to the to, to the Stoke onslaught, so to speak. Um, <laughs> we um, uh, the regular viewers of this show will know that we tend to have like a danger man focus. Um, now, very interesting because well, obviously with the summer, we know Liverpool are a little bit thin on the ground when it comes to attack and talent, and there are a number of people. Once the window shut, they were talking about free transfers, and when I was uh, inundated with people saying, "Bring Michael Owen back, ignore the fact that he's a genius twat, get him back because he's a goal scorer and he's talented he's and he's machine. and he's free." So. But it stands to reason that, given that he signed for Stoke, he, he should have had an incredible season, and uh, and his stats are going to be incredible. So let's have a look at uh, his danger man focus, Michael Owen. Um, goal assists, none. Total chances created, including assists, none. Clear cut chances created, none. Goals, none. Total shot, none. Shooting accuracy, no percent. Chance conversion, no percent. Clear cut chance conversion, not. Fucking percent, Michael Owen. There you go. Free transfer of the season. Um, he's well now going to play, isn't he? Now that I've thrown all the things. I think the other thing is what <laughs> really got in is that his best sort of stat is that he's played fifty three minutes, <laughs> and that's his highest stat. He's done nothing in that time. He's come on four times as a sub and done fuck all. What is going on? He's he's just piss poor, isn't he? <laughs> Good. Basically, but no, it's just, it's, you know what, it's a shame, um, because, I mean, Dad, look, you know, go back to, go back to World Cup 98, 
and you're there, and you know, and he, and he, when he scores that goal against Argentina, and you just like, and there was that, there was that real feeling of vindication to see this lad that we've been back at all season go on and do it on the biggest stage, and we had nothing but high hopes for him, and then the way he ends up leaving the club, and and subsequently, you, you'd almost, you, it's hard to feel sorry for him, isn't it? Well, I was a big fan, and I was heartbroken when he signed for Newcastle instead of coming back to Liverpool. I thought that I'd really shattered with that. I've always hated Real Madrid ever since then because they certainly messed about mm. with the fee, wanting almost double what we sold him to them for. Well, it, yeah. But, you know, he, his injury record is such, and he had, he's admitted it himself recently, I think he wrote a, an article saying how that famous hamstring injury on Liverpool really did change his career completely. Uh, and he, he wasn't the same player afterwards. He's still a, he was still a very good player. But that extra bit of pace, which we you know was killing people, was was gone. Yeah, um, and I don't think he's ever been the same really since. He has always been a brilliant finisher, and if you give him a chance in the box, he'll stick it in the net for you. Yeah, I just can't see why he went to Stoke. It's the it's the last team I would have thought he would be suited to. Yeah, I, I, I and I just have this image when Chris said he only had fifty six minutes on the pitch. Yeah, that he's, he he comes on. He's like a, a babe lost in the woods, looking at all these people who've been scared to death, and all these <laughs> other players, you know, around him. Who's been balling these huge Becky towering behemoths around him, punching people in the face, and Michael Owen, who's never been in a brawl in his life, like other than to wait for, for a ball, he's waiting for a ball to run onto, and they just keep going. And, 20 yards over his head. <laughs> playing on a team with the X Men. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh uh, no. You know what? This is it. I, there was that, you said that interview with, I think it was the BBC or, or Sky, and, and it was great. And I, I did I did feel a little bit for him when he talked about that and his, his sort of regrets and his career and what have you. But there's also that notion that, you know, where, where, where were you in Istanbul, lad? You know? And, um, exactly. He was a, one of those, it was a bit like the, um, you know, people who, who um, play for pop groups and then they leave and they become famous. It was just exactly the same as that, wasn't it? Yeah. He left Liverpool and we won the European Cup. Yeah. It's uh, the, the thing of him. I think of him at the time. I always felt that the, the hype he wanted to be. He, he he saw himself as Michael Owen, the world footballer, and felt the that brand yeah, like Beckham. Yeah. yeah, and like Beckham, think well, you know, I can move to Real Madrid and I'll I will go there and I will be Michael Owen playing in Real Madrid. You know, Platt did it. Fifteen years earlier or whatever, going over to going over to Italy, um, but it never worked out because you know we ended up in the same side as Ronaldo, Raúl, and Ruben Nistelrooy, and was never. But did score goals when he got on the pitch? He did, yeah. you know. He, he had... the, the other part of me wonders now you know about the injury and how he felt about it. Whether going to Real Madrid was a was something that he thought. Well, I've got to take the chance while my career is still, and I've still got two legs to walk. <laughs> yeah, that's a um, big good point. Yeah, um, as a shape, I say, as you can already tell, we don't have any great detailed analysis on Stoke um, because of the fact that we don't know how anyone got on at the weekend as we film this. What I have got though is the um, prior to prior to uh, the weekend fixtures, we always talk about Liverpool's form and the form table and how it is a, a rough indication of how well we're doing. Very interesting one. I've got the away form table here. If you just want to have a quick glance at it, um, we're currently f- uh, currently we were currently for last week we were yeah. But obviously we we won't have played an away game since then. But obviously teams around us will have played one, which will affect this. But fourth in the in the in the away form table. I mean, I've, uh, it's not scintillating that you know two wins, three draws, and a defeat. But by all accounts, it's away form as, as far as away form goes. I think our away form is being pretty poor. But that's not bad, is it, Chris? You know? No, it's not. And it, this, the question has to be asked whether we're putting too much pressure on at home, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. And whether playing away with these new sort of fearless youngsters and and everything is a little bit easier for them than coming and sitting and forty thousand scouts going and press me. Yeah, for ninety minutes. I think it's it not just the, in the league as well. Some of the European performances have been uh, exceptional. Yeah, you know, even when we played a lot of the kids, we played really well. I think that, even that the Angie game, which we lost, you know, talking about a team that had Connor Cozy whole anchor in the midfield, and we were back with we the better side for the vast majority of that game. Um, anyway, uh, come on, we'll, we'll wrap this up with, in, the, in the absence of our say detailed information. Uh, if you know more, let us know in the comments section. Um, <laughs> in fact, I'll tell you what, go on. Uh, anyone want to have a bash at how we think we're going to line up? Can we do it? Chris, have you got one? I've got how I'd like us to line up. <laughs> <laughs> go on. Go on, Chris. Rainer, 
Wisdom scale, Agar Johnson, Lucas, Allen, Henderson. So rest and Gerard this week. Sterling back in on the right, Enrique hopefully back on the left, and Suarez up front. Yeah, obviously, as we say, we'll be filming this with eight days to go to the kickoff, which is astounding. Um, so hopefully Enrique will be fifth. Hopefully he's um, hopefully his missus isn't dropping child at at, at kickoff time like the games. <laughs> yeah, a court allegedly. <laughs> It's a gay gate. You don't corpse me very often on the show. Like, <laughs> you've done very well there. No, um, yes. According to FIFA. Yeah, according to according to FIFA, FA and UEFA, uh, Enrique is there. Is obviously gay because Suzo's had a bit of banter. Anyway, we're not going to get into that again now. If you want to hear us discuss about Suzo, it's on the uh, subscriber show as we always say. It's free for a month there, uh, theredmentv.com. Check it out. Um, yeah, hopefully Enrique is, is back. As I say, is is. is his, his, his wife or girlfriend is due to have a baby on Christmas Eve, so that could put the put the cab. It's going to be very interesting to see the difference between Brendan Rodgers and Rafa Benitez. And will you, yeah, you know what? Will you be like, go enjoy the birth of your child, or fucking get here now? Get your shin pads on, get ready because you're playing, and I'm telling you, you're playing. We shall we shall we shall find out. Um, James, how do you think uh, Liverpool are going to get on? Score prediction, please. I mean. One nil. I, I can't see it. I can't see a score in more than one. Optimism, Christmas optimism. This is the problem with the pre film and so yeah, Christmas. I, you're not full of the Christmas spirit. But right when you're playing that freak show at Stoke, I mean, what do you do? You know what I mean? You could go either way. I don't know. One nil. One nil. Go for one nil. I think we'll win two one. Interesting. No, I think two one as well. I, you know what? I will have a hat trick of two ones there. Like, I, I, agree. I, I have this feeling it. it Similar to the uh, the League Cup game last season, was it when Suarez just turned the style on? Is that I think so that was two one, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah it was that was that was the score, wasn't it? But I, I feel I have that sort of feeling about this game, uh, particularly being Boxing Day, slightly different atmosphere. Everyone's going to be afraid. Yeah, I think we're going to yeah, get referee might give us a decision or two. Well, Steady oh. on. <laughs> <laughs> Suarez penalty then. Oh my word! Oh, Get a nugget on oh. that one. Like, I mean, what a Christmas present that would be. Yes, yes, um, yes. Uh, uh, on the subject of what, what we want for Christmas, um, thanks to uh, wonderful contributions from Mr. James Sutton, we've got a little sketch that should be out. Uh, so do check that out. A couple of the hot, the top Premier League stars, including Jordan Henderson <laughs> and, uh, and Arsene Wenger, uh, revealing uh, what they want for Christmas. So be sure to check that out. Anyway, yeah, let me know your score predictions. Let me know your lineup predictions as well. As I say, you'll have a much better idea than us so please feel free to lambast us for our lack of knowledge anyway yeah thanks for thanks for watching that if you're still watching us on uh youtube uh, see you later enjoy the game be back soon um if you're watching us on the subscriber show i uh, you're still here we're going to talk a little bit about transfer rumors dave how are you